Hello, everybody, and welcome to this latest edition of the Fireside with Founders and Leaders podcast. Today, I am absolutely buzzing to bring you Dave Hornsby, who is currently head of product at Modify. In Dave's own words, Modify is what would happen if Figma and Adobe had a baby. So it's an image editing platform that helps you collaborate to create the best images for the products that you're designing. So used by designers all over the world to really revolutionize image sharing and image creation. Um, so we talk all about Dave's journey working in companies like ITV and Snapchat, um, all the way through to talking a bit more about how AI is having a big role in terms of image editing, looking at some of the issues that are coming up in and around that with, with topics of you know, who owns the rights and things like that. Um, so a really great episode for anyone out there, certainly in my design network uh, and product network who are interested in learning more about this and definitely a product that I would say go and have a look at and have a bit of a play with. So sit back, relax and enjoy. <laughs> So hello Dave, welcome to the podcast. Hello Rupert, thank you for having me, it's good to be here. No, thank you for joining me. Well, you, you say here, you're, you're in your, what looks like an amazing study. I, I think it's, uh, it's definitely up there with some of the best backgrounds that I've yeah. seen. It is, there are some strategically placed uh, books and memorabilia from former yeah. companies <laughs> things there, but yeah, it's, uh, I'd yeah be lying I can see I'd certainly be, on the, the... I'd be lying if I didn't um, sort of, you know, make sure it was tidy. Uh, my my wife actually when she works here she works from this desk here so i did i did make sure it was a quick tidy and there weren't there weren't things out that shouldn't be she was turfed out of the uh the study which is what i do to my wife every friday when i work from home yeah 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 very good well really really great to have you on so thank you so much for for taking the time so we'll, we'll jump straight in and uh say you know one of the things that i've been been talking to people about so far on this season is um, specifically about their routes into products and no one seems to have the, the sort of same same route as anyone else so if we can talk a bit more about your background you know looking at sort of where you know where you came from all the way through to, to where you are now with with Modify but even looking you know you're starting your career at, at Red Bee, I believe. Yeah um, I, I'm interested to, to hear how other people got in, into product, but I, I, it's probably the, the, a similar response. It, it sort of happened by accident, really. Um, my background, uh, my degree is in music, music and sound technology. And uh, around about the time I was at university, I got more interested in trying to work with video and, and, and transcode video uh, to, to make the film we were making work on an iPod and early phones at the time rather than making music. And this gave me this sort of base of video skill, which uh, then when university finished, I did a, a sound engineering job for a bit and saw this job at Red Bee Media, which is not, not many people know. So uh, it, it used to be part of the BBC and is this small uh, private company based uh, out of what well, at the time anyway at least White City and the broadcast center in the heart of the BBC and when I arrived there it was you know it was like Christmas I can't believe that you know <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be, be paid to you know watch video on demand services and, and, and transcode content and check it and all this kind of stuff and at this Dream time, job yeah it, it really was like you, you know I had, I had friends that were trying to make it in the post-production industry and were so all kinds of rejection. We're doing running jobs and all this kind of stuff. And I, I really thought I'd landed on my feet. It was incredible. I loved it. And um, and it was just, just at this huge time of um, video uh, on-demand services. You know, we were working in the room that iPlayer was being ran from. And, and later, uh, 4OD started. You know, so it, it was just this melting pot of not only technology, but um they, they ran fantastic creative services as well. They ran, made a lot of the... Um, adverts that you you saw on on the mainstream tv channels and um yeah so i i did i did i did that for for a bit and sort of became a supervisor and learned all these all these people management skills and uh, and that then and then redby signed a contract with itv i got to know the people at itv and they were planning a huge technology transformation project what, what year are we in now we're probably in 2011 or something like that huge yeah. um, huge overhaul that, jumped over to ITV. I actually went 
you know, from from one day being the supplier to to being the uh, the customer yeah. on, on the, the same meeting, which which was strange. But um, yeah, I spent five or six years at ITV, uh, and it was a it was a when I was at ITV, there was this huge um, sort of focus on what was happening a lot in the industry where people were starting to hire their own software engineers rather than outsource everything to large companies. And um, this is the part where the, the, the product thing really comes in. So at least my experience of the first product managers that I worked with, they tended to be people who understood a workflow very well or a domain very, very well and enough of a technology understanding to communicate with engineers. Um, and yeah. you know, they, they could get, get things done. And that's when you know, it, it sort of morphed from uh, project managers or application managers into, oh, you know, you're a product manager or a product owner. And, um, and, and that's really where, I, uh, again, it felt like Christmas. It's like, oh, there's all these hugely talented engineers that um, would listen to what you were saying and, and would turn your yeah. ideas into a reality. You know, it was, it, it's incredible. And, and um, yeah, so I spent five or six years at ITV, a huge, uh, huge, um, hugely enjoyable thing. Like during that time, we uh, got rid of a lot of videotape, a huge, uh, you know, when, when I started, yeah. it was on videotapes, I became a master at VTR operation. And then, you know, then all of a sudden on the other side, it was, it was all about how do we eradicate this hugely cost slow process of moving TV programs around on videotape. Um, so we built a lot of our own software and uh, integrated a lot of things to, to do that. And then in 20, ooh, late 2016, early 2017, um, I got uh, a phone call from a friend at, at, at Snapchat, actually somebody who I worked with right back at the Red Bee days and said, look, uh, we need oh, wow. somebody in London. Yeah, uh, we need somebody in London who can work with engineers who understands the video. And I'm like, what, what do I know about social media? You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> TV guy. Like, you know, I've moved TV programs around hundreds of gigabytes across networks, across the world and satellites and, you know, but um, fundamentally the, the principles were the same that, you know, there was a, a significant amount of video from publishers and various media houses that needed processing and put through a workflow to get in front of, uh, you know, in this case, hundreds of millions of people at Snapchat. Um, but like I say, a lot, a lot of the principles were the same. And, you know, the way that we work with the engineers are the same. I, a hugely, hugely enjoyable five and a half years at, at Snapchat. Where I then sort of went further into the to the the product world and really learned from the best, you know, people working at Snapchat. The engineers were were from you know Amazon and Microsoft and Google and Meta, like all of these these phenomenal best in world places. Um, you know, I learned yeah. a tremendous amount there. Um, and then, so fast forward to June twenty two. Um, yep. where a small group of former Snapchat employees came to me with um, the two founders of Modify came to me with this idea about, uh, hey, you know, this this opportunity to massively improve the way visual designers and graphic designers work together. And uh, the, the way they sold it to me, actually, it took me right back to my music roots. And... Um, they said, look, look, you know, like you know how when you make a piece of music, you you record the raw vocals, and then you can you can put reverb on top of it. And you can affect those kind of stuff. You don't destroy the basis the basis of the recording at the bottom. It's like you know, people aren't making images like that. It's it's fundamentally a destructive process. I'm like, you, you're joking. Like, you know, yeah, we've been we've had this for, for years, um, and you know, I was really drawn in, and not only by you know the the quality of the team. The, the, the founders of Modify, Joe and Piers, have put together, but I, it's, it seemed like a no-brainer. I'd, I'd seen how similar software had transformed the way I'd worked in the past, and I wanted to get on that bus and, and go on the journey. So um, that was a very long uh, way back through through my career there, but that's that's how I got to to today. Nice, and, and they um, they definitely knew how to speak your language. And what what really strikes me about all of that in terms of your career all the way through uh it's been about you know working with people that you know you you seem to have you know been able to get your your jobs through connections that you've made in other places and 
take things that you've you've learned in those some of those places onto the new roles that you're doing all working in um s- similar-ish type sectors still in you know working with technology of course but still different different industries at heart so um it just goes to show you how how you can take those transferable skills quite easily through through the different roles that you're doing and, and so in terms of that then my my question is you know what what sort of challenges did you have you sort of faced you know transitioning from example from from ITV to snap and then now to to modify in terms of the the different sectors and getting to grips with those yeah good good question um I did. I was just reminded of something that uh, my dad always told told me when just you're saying you know, people and things like you, you need to look after people on the way up because you never know when you're going to be on the way down. And that that's you know my, my dad. Hundred percent. Yeah. Anyway. Wise um, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I suppose I've taken various different aspects from each uh, role. Really, it like I think landing the the first job at red bee media you know really was a melting pot of um creativity and technology and all and, and all this kind of stuff and what i learned there was that like look this it's up to you to learn this stuff so immerse yourself in it stick yourself in there and take as much as you can from other people and i think that you know i only did that job for for a few years um then you know moving on to itv i think that that gave me a significant amount of operational skill that um, really taught me how to form and deliver projects and, and products, mainly because of sort of a volatile economic situation, actually, to be honest, that like the, the revenue patterns into a company ITV, uh, like vary quarter to quarter. And this was before they'd sort of balanced uh, their, their free to air advertising business with their studios business. So we were uh, constantly making big plans that then had to be curtailed by budget cuts or, you know, potentially even redundancies or anything like that. Um, so that really gave me this basis of, of focus on the value, deliver incrementally, work with the engineers and understand what you can, how you can really get MVPs out fast, you know. Um, Snapchat built on that, but it, Snapchat was the first time that it was a real technology company, an actual, you know, I suppose um, you, you can't really class Snapchat as one of the big, big, you know, big technology companies, but they're, they're sort of on the periphery. But it, it, it was technology first at Snapchat. Yeah. And that really taught me, uh, you know, operating at scale and because uh, I've never done anything um that was going to be consumed by you know the number of people there. So when you're when you're dealing with you know potentially, I know maybe a hundred million people watching one of the pieces of, uh, of content that you know is in the discover section or whatever. It's um, you know it it, it topped up the, all yeah. those skills uh, completely in terms of handling you know ha- how you release something, how you would communicate it at scale. Um, and, and through to modify now, um, you know we're we're in this uh, company that, that that's you know heavily leveraging the latest AI technologies. Um, I am learning a phenomenal amount every day. You know, we, we we really have to dedicate a portion of our day to keeping up with what's happening yeah. in in the in the AI space. You know, we have Slack Slack feeds and newsletters coming in, and it's especially developments from the open source community like you know i've uh, i've learned a phenomenal number of acronyms of various uh, ai uh, you know mechanisms and processes and um yeah it, it's uh it, yeah it really feels like for the first time that we're really on on, on the pulse of uh, you know the real cutting edge of things um but yet, but throughout all of those things, I still maintain that, you know, as a product person, unless you are a highly technical product person, like we don't, we don't do anything ourselves. You know, we, we sit, we think we write, we write specs, we work with designers, but it, unless you can unlock that human capability in others, like you're not going to, you know, achieve uh, success and, and that, you know, throughout all yeah. of those jobs, like unless you can communicate with people uh, learn what motivates them and, and you know that that's that's the real thing that that flows throughout 
all of these roles, really. Nice. And, and I'd imagine that um, given, as you mentioned, so it was the, you know, some, some people that you knew in terms of the founding um, uh, members of, of Modifier, sort of ex-Snap Snapchat, uh, that you've managed to take quite a quite a lot in terms of the lessons that you've learned from Snapchat into the product development at, at Modify. So, what sort of things have you have you managed to sort of bring that you you guys all learned there? Um, you know, well, it, what's interesting is that both the founders are also ex Amazon, um, and okay. Amazon have have a lot. I I never went through the Amazon route. I know a lot of people that did. Um, they have very, very uh, firm and strong principles when it comes to engineering and leadership. Uh, you know, so a lot of that was taken into Snap. I, learned, I sort of got exposed to a lot of that at, at the first time then. And then rolled on into, into Modify as well. But um, I, think, I think fundamentally, you know, um, it's, a, it's a probably a lot of things that you've heard from other, other product people that, you know, if you, if you can get, 80% of the value of a feature by doing 20% of the work, do it. Um, I am a firm, firm believer in um, an incremental, a truly incremental product delivery. And if you can do the simplest possible thing to prove out your, your theory, then do it. Um, you know, the, the age old thing of move, move fast and break things. And I think yep. like, you know, a conversation that we always have, actually, you know, we, we, um, because we're a, a design focused company, we're big company wide. That's big company wide. There's 16 of us. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's everyone, big enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I make it sound like there's 5,000 dollars. Right? Um, you know, we, we have these. Everybody in the company has a say in. Uh, you know, can give their opinion on on you know what what feels weird. Like, does this does this work? Whatever. Um, and um, you know, I think um, I think it's important to recognize. Uh, that you know you don't have to get things perfect first time round, and that there's far more value in doing things quickly and then iterating on top of it than you know spending hours and hours iterating. So this is perfect. Let's go. You know, what's what's the old saying? It's like the perfect yeah. is the enemy of progress. Done. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I perhaps more more so than 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 others that I've worked with will um, take a very simple route to get things quick to then to then learn upon and uh and improve and um that that can only really come with like say the trust and relationship with the engineers that are actually building the, the products you know nice and, and so obviously we we touched uh earlier upon uh the fact of you know when it when it modify you're know, having to put time aside to mm -hmm. to learn about and keeping up with with the technology advancements especially in ai so you know, let's talk a bit more about Modify and, and what you guys are doing because you guys are, are really sort of um, you know, changing some of the, the scope of, of what, what can happen with uh, image editing and you know, the design process for, for imagery. Uh, and a lot of you know, our, our audience and our network, as you know, you know my, my sort of primary uh, business in, in terms of where we make our money is, is a recruitment company who focus on you know, product design and, and software engineering. So um, a lot of people will be out there who probably won't have heard of Modify and won't necessarily know, know what you guys are doing. So, so tell me a bit more about, about what you guys are doing and how you guys are you know, harnessing AI to, to sort of yeah, evolutionize, revolutionize, whatever we want to call it, you know, digital imagery. So the, the simplest and quickest way to describe Modify is, is imagine if Photoshop and Figma had a baby. Right. So what what we what we've built with Modify is um, we, we, we believe uh, at least that the world's first web based collaborative uh, image editing packages all in a web browser. And it works exactly like Figma does, really, but with pixel manipulation uh, of, of Photoshop. So you can, you know, it's professional grade visual editing purely uh, or primarily designed at graphic designers. Um, that uh, yeah, say is all in a, in a web browser in real time multiplayer. Um, nice. Yeah, go on. And I was going to ask. So, in terms of in, in AI, um, you know, how is AI influencing? Because you hear a lot about you know the fact that you know, AI can create images pretty easily these days. You know, there's there's loads of tools out there that are you know doing things, and there's 
people sometimes I speak to people and they go, Oh no, is it the end of you know being you know a visual designer? Is there is AI gonna come and take my jobs? And I think that's what loads of people are fearful for in the the tech world. I genuinely don't believe that to be the case. I think they it's it's just here as an enabler. But but what are you guys doing and how are you incorporating AI into the platform? So I mean, AI for us is uh, is an incredible tool as part part of the the feature set. You know, we're not primarily AI. We we have traditional uh, tools that you might find in something like Figma or Adobe Photoshop, and then we have you know the ability to augment those creative tools with AI. You know, for generative purposes and sort of efficiency purposes as well. Like, uh, for example. You know, there there'll, there'll probably be uh, many uh, I don't know photo editors or graphic designers at the moment painstakingly removing backgrounds from things or splitting things into layers. Um, you know, contextually deleting things or blurring out backgrounds, all, all that kind of stuff. Like, so um, yeah. we you know we we offer those sorts of tools as well. We also have generative tools, but the the real kicker really, and what what we believe is that. Um, that uh, traditional design skill combined with uh, you know advanced AI technologies can offer uh, you know a, a much greater capability and efficiency so the way we're thinking about it more is more of a co-pilot certainly not a replacement we you know we're not interested in uh, some of the more plug-in systems that you know is purely text prompt and then uh, you know you get this this image at the end of it um, yeah. We believe that, you know, by offering a platform that can take the very best of the technologies available in different areas and, and harness it in an environment that's uh, familiar to designers, you know, it, it, it you know, looks and feels uh, like, you know, a simpler version of Figma and Photoshop, um, that, that this really will, will be the key. So in terms of what I believe as well, I, I, I review that it's, it's, there's a lot of doom and gloom and say, so, you know, everyone's going to lose their jobs. And the, the fact is that things are going to evolve and things are going to change as they have done through every major technology technological advance in history. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's exactly where things are going, isn't it? It's, you know, it's, it's all an, an evolution. And I think there's it's just a uh, very typical sort of human nature of people fear the uh, the unknown and things they don't know uh, about. So, and that's why you have to spend all your time keeping up with it, with all of this stuff. And, and you, you know, um, I, you know, I, I know a lot of designers, I know a lot of um, you know, craftspeople that, you know, there's still a lot of um, non-digital craft, beautiful things going off. And, and, you know, and I think, I think it would be, uh, you know, really great evolution if, you know, as well as these huge leveraging these huge technology advances that the, the true craftspeople went went back to the originals as well. You know, like there's a beautiful thing there. Um, you, you know, look at look at the resurgences that we've had in old technologies. Uh, you know, with with all this new stuff around it. So I, I I don't think it's you know death death to creativity. I think we can see new <laughs> ceilings, new ceilings. Um, yeah. I think, it's, as you say, it's an exciting time. So uh, a couple of things I'd, I'd like to, to touch upon from things you've mentioned there. So we've talked about, obviously, you know, collaboration, real-time collaboration. Now, people have been certainly in the design world used to using uh, Figma to, 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 do, to do that. And that was actually, you know, as you know, and most people listening to this know, you know, one of the bigger benefits of, of Figma when it first came out was that real-time collaboration. So how, how do you think that, can really sort of impact the the user experience of a tool like this to I'm, I'm assuming hopefully only in really a positive way but and and what are the things that you need to sort of look out for to ensure ensure sorry that it is a positive experience yeah great question i think um I think if we zoom zoom back 20 minutes ago to the to the conversation about when i was at itv like the first um time I experienced like this product evolution in this collaboration sense was when uh, the CTO at the time threw away uh, Microsoft Office and bought in Google Docs and for the first time like <laughs> yeah you know I, I, I distinctly remember something happened some, something terrible happened and we had about 30 minutes to form a, a proposal for the board or something and they, you know everybody jumping in a Google Doc blah, 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 and it was like this is magic this is just this feels incredible and a similar thing happened when um 
when I was at Snapchat, we transitioned from Sketch to Figma. And yeah. I remember one of the first things that I did when I arrived at Snapchat was download, uh, download Sketch. And I was sent, for, you know, gigabytes, gigabytes of design files that I opened up. And, you know, there's a couple that are like final underscore final V2 and, you know, final underscore approved yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, right. Um, and, uh, you know, Sketch is a phenomenal, phenomenal design for him. But, you know, what, what Figma really did, they recognized that um, there was more to the design process than the designer. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they didn't prioritize those use cases of the designer and give them an absolutely excellent design tool to use. But they recognized that it actually to extract the value from those designs, they needed to involved, uh, involve the, the product managers, the engineers, uh, I don't know, the, the, the marketers, the whomever are going to have to approve these things to get it out. And that, that is the, that's the real secret source of their products. And, you know, a significant portion of Figma's revenue come from non-designers. But it's, yep. if, unless they built this incredible design tool, they wouldn't have been introduced into the organization to start with. So a little bit of <laughs> background there. But like, and, you know, really what, what we're trying to do with Modify is build this incredible design tool that still serves a multi multi disciplinary designer at the moment, and and that when we look at what people are doing, they're not purely operating in in a vector land, you know, building websites or UIs, um, and you know they're not purely operating in uh, raster land. Like these talented people, they're looking at they're jumping between various bits of software, and. Um, uh, and, you know, combine the best of them. Like one of the things that we are uh, also investing heavily in at the moment is, is motion. You know, like it's so um, uh, required now that, you know, you would d design something and your, if your outlet and distribution is social media, like the video lends itself to that. So, you know, what, what we're really doing is, is racking that all in, into one tool. Um, the collaborative aspects, though, like you think about, where these uh, designers are, if they, if they, you know, generally design teams are, are federated now, they're not all located in the same place. And again, if you think about applying um, uh, the workflow of, of how an image gets, I don't know, uh, onto a, a packaging or how a poster's made, like it's very rarely one person yeah. that fulfills that all the way through. And we don't have today a, a truly collaborative multidisciplinary pixel-based uh system that people can from los angeles to london um where maybe they're not building it to, together you know like most people in figma don't build things together they you have one person yeah, who really throws out the ideas another who comments perhaps there's some noodles done by the side of it this happens a lot in our process uh, and then you know together you, you figure out the right answer and then ultimately somebody be they a uh, a founder or a product manager says, let's go with this one. And yep. you know, I, I suppose our, our big mission is to, if you think about how many images fly around the world, on whether they end up on, on T-shirts or uh, mugs or posters or the internet or whatever, like, you know, it's, um, it's to remove that, you know, the need to export files and lengthy backs and forth and, and, and quite frankly, time that nobody can afford at the moment. So yeah, perfect. Like, and, and if people can be dipping in, dipping in as well, it's super helpful, especially if we're talking about uh, design and the design process and making sure design has this seat at the table, which is something that I, I often talk about and hear about uh, having uh, you know, platforms like Figma, like say, that's something that's even even simpler than 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 that to have a, a CEO uh, founder of a business dip in and go, ah, oh, yeah, that. That's great. That all makes sense. Suddenly, design has that seat at the table, and they, you know, someone is seeing the real value. You know, the, the problem with other tools, like as you say, Sketch is great. Even before Sketch, like Azure, which is still a great tool for UX, you know, heavy lifting. But you put someone who isn't, you know, aware of these processes, they look at it and they go, "Huh? What's you that tell, about? I don't understand." Tell, tell your CEO that you know he's going to have to download a few gigabytes of the latest update. So that he can you know, <laughs> view the um, view the staff time. It's not going to happen. So you know that's why no. you know, leaning on the. It was a great quote from one of our angel investors. Actually, he said, "Look, you know, 
what you're doing, it, it, it just makes sense. If you were building a design tool now, you put it in a web browser, that, that low friction, that virality, that ease and the spread and federated world that we live in now, uh, you know, you put it, you put it there, like you make it collaborative if it's in a, it's in a web browser and, you know, and, and leveraging anything that you can do to make things more efficient or more creative by AI, like it, it makes sense, you know. So um, it's that, that that's that's what we're what we're trying to achieve anyway. <laughs> nice. And um, we've talked about uh, sort of your yeah, image editing and and say uh, we talked quite a lot about about the role of AI and and what that sort of plays. Now there's there's various. Um, Sort of levels of controversy uh, around some of this stuff, as you know, think about even like the the actors' strike recently was just about people using their their image as an avatar and, and things like that. So, what um what what do you think you can be done in terms of the considerations for, for whilst you know leveraging AI but ensuring that it's done ethically uh, in in sort of platforms? Yeah, I, I think um, I think we're going to see huge. Um steps towards sort of like um authentication or or, or uh, verification that you know if ai was used as part of this process and certainly much much more transparency of training sets much much more transparency of uh you know i think a lot a lot of the early models and things that were released certainly in the generative space like you know people weren't sure you know what images went into that you know and and it's fair enough if you are an artist and you make your living uh from images and then someone's come along and sort of you know used them to to make money off of that you know it's uh it's not on um i think um yeah though you know there's, there's, we're going to see far more sort of self-trained ai like why not if you are an artist provide a model with your style and and use it to help you you know ideate and explore ideas within that 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 style you know so just burdening everything with oh this is ai which you know is just the latest it's just called ai because it's a step change in machine learning that's been around for decades um yeah you know like so certainly i do understand the uh the sensitivity it's something that we talk about a lot like you know how do we how do we do this right you know how do we be sensitive to what people want and, and like I say our, our whole thing is like we don't want to um replace your creativity there we still believe that there's nothing finer than a, than a creative mind but what we do think is that you know by applying these technologies providing the data sources or you know uh, are good of not non-commercial and non-infringement things that you know we can lower the floor and, and hide the ceiling especially in that ideation space um and uh you know hopefully you know make make allow people to be more creative find things that they wouldn't have found before um yeah Nice, and, that, and that, that's the whole purpose, isn't it? It's, it's to uh, allow creativity to flow even even further, and and give people that platform to to hopefully build that creativity. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's um, we're experimenting. There's um, only in the past couple of weeks, uh, there's a, a technology become available: LCMs, later consistency models, which allow an image to be generated in in a very very short period of time. So we've already seen this uh development from like a year ago where you know you were talking at 30 40 seconds maybe a minute for it to generate an image now to it being very very close to real time maybe one second two seconds something like that and this that's, this process, that's, that's pretty close yeah, yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty it's pretty close and i say if you, if you check <laughs> yeah. out check out our twitter you see some videos that we, we put up and this this it, it's um, our CTO described it as it, it's literally like going from letter writing of having to, to you know decide what you want to put into the machine to then see a result forty seconds later to to you know using an instant messenger or using you know using WhatsApp or something and and this it inspires much more creativity you know you can move things around and go okay I see what's happening here. and this and, and the ideation process takes uh, you know gross heads and. Um, it's uh, it's a, a remarkable event, and that and that's happened in 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 a year, really, in the best part of a year, yeah. and, and mainly driven through sort of open source developments and things. So it's um, it's phenomenal. It's crazy, and the the pace things are moving at it just still blows my 
tiny mind uh, every single day, to be yeah. honest. So, um, yeah, what, what do you see as some of the the things that are coming, you know, down the road then in terms of this this space specifically? You know, maybe even some of the things that are coming with, with Modify. You know, tell me a bit more what, what what's sort of happening. Well, um, the, the the product that we've that we've built leverages a lot of the you know internal hardware of, of your machine. So a lot of things run locally. The engine that we've built, which allows fully non destructive um, workflow like it is it's sort of running on your on your GPU and inside the machine like that. But we are reliant on um, huge, huge uh, GPUs and uh, machines in the cloud for diffusion technologies. And what I'd really like to see is the development of the efficiency of these models so that they can you know run on machines. Um, you know that we all have. Like I'm, I'm on a MacBook here. I'm sure you've got some, you know, decent, decent PC or MacBook there. Like, um, yeah. So to, to to squeeze the efficiency down, so that you know you you're not. I think one of the machines that we we were running for some real time stuff. You know, it had something like eight GPUs in it or something. You know, it's um, and that that's when things really really get exciting because you know they. Um, it's it's expensive at the moment to run a lot of these processes and and um, yeah so yeah I mean we're 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 ready and willing uh, for those advances to to come to uh, to help us run things you know locally and faster. Nice, very good. And, and then so look, there's a bit of a, a parting parting bit of wisdom, if you will. And one of the things I, I tend to ask people is. You know, what, what things would you, you say that you've sort of learned the most, you know, bits of advice that you could give to people, you know, coming, coming up in the product world of you know, things that they could, lessons that they could take, sorry, from, from the work that you've done, you know, from where you started at Red B to, to get to where you are now with, with Modify? Um, I, I think we, we, we kind of touched on, touched on it a little bit earlier with, like, you know, pe- for me, it's all been about people. Like, if you think, um, think about what you you genuinely um, achieve by yourself. Like I don't know, there are probably very few people in the world that can say, actually, yeah, I am a the single thing that I did all by myself. I didn't rely on anybody else. I've done that, and so I learned very, very uh, early that you know treat people nicely and uh, understand where they're coming from, and you, you get far more done. And I, I genuinely think that's uh, you know. The, the the real the real key to to getting on and achieving things yeah it's uh i think once you can um understand and work with you know have enough technical capability to to really understand the principles of you know the engine what the engineers are building and find out ways that you know how can we make this simpler and uh you know what what is that incremental delivery like that, that that's that's really you know the principles that that that, that I uh, apply. Um, all that on top of a good night's sleep, and uh, it's, yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. I guess as I've got older, nice. I've really uh, come to realize how much difference good sleep, good sleep, and good coffee can can make to any um, any situation. <laughs> the t- the two don't go hand in hand, but well, uh, yeah, some yeah, good yeah. advice in terms of the sleep. Well, for sure, coffee's in the morning and the sleep's in the evening. Yeah, that's uh, generally yeah. That's it. Yeah, you've got to make sure you're not getting your caffeine fix at five o'clock at night. That's not inducive of uh, a good night's sleep, in my experience, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yes. Well, look, Dave, thank you so much for for coming on. It's been. Uh, absolutely awesome sort of hearing all about your journey and finding out more about modify i would uh you know urge anyone who's in the design industry or not in the design industry even to to go and check it out as a product we'll include the links in the um uh, in the bio here uh so anyone can go and go and have a look and and see if the product's something that they they feel yeah. could benefit them because i'm sure it probably will yeah it's it's free to sign up uh there's there's 500 free credits that's enough to uh you know generate 500 images or or five uh, 500 image guided generations as we call it um yeah check it out it's um please let us know what you think you know it is it is early in our life and we want to uh 
team up with uh, professional designers that can can help us you know build something better so uh, please sign up and uh, send me, send me a message or use the feedback tool with the, within in the app and uh, we'll definitely love to hear what you think Awesome. Well, like I say, I make sure the links are included in the in the bio here, so, as well as your your LinkedIn, so people can connect with you and, and chat. But yeah, thanks again, Dave, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I look forward to seeing the product grow. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been great.